Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Hello there, welcome back. So, guys, uh, I was going to do a complete like news update, but then decided to go deeper down the historical aspects and just focus on one kind of line of thinking here. And before we get going, just want to invite everybody to subscribe if you haven't subscribed. Double check if you have and click that little bell. Hopefully you get a notification, both Evolutionary Energy Arts, the parent channel, it's about five years old, and EE Arts, the second channel, which is a little bit more into the spiritual side of things and going a little bit deeper. But this one, this one we could have put over there, but we decided to put it over here because it's definitely touchy subjects. So here we go. Runner dies at Brooklyn half marathon finish line. 15 others taken to hospital. When can you remember a year where you see a runner dying during a marathon? Well, maybe it happens here and there. Maybe. 16 people, though, overall, were taken to the hospital, including the man who died and four others in serious condition. Now, it was hot. Yeah, at 9 a.m., Coney Island was already 70 degrees with 83% humidity. But is there something else? And I know you guys already know, you know, what what many of us feel and think is underlying this situation because we've seen so many athletes all across the globe all of a sudden just dying in their 20s, even in their teens. We've seen so many kids, uh, you know, just at local high school football games, you know, soccer, baseball even, just dropping. This is not the way it was in the past. I, I, I don't care how people want to smooth it over. This is not normal. This is a situation that's developing because of other situations uh, that have developed in these recent times. And, and I, I do recall, you know, years ago, it's like on occasion you would hear of one of these incidences where <clears throat> somebody that was young and healthy collapsed on on the field, you know. But now if you go through the news, it's there's like several and it's it feels like every day and the list is growing and then if you look at the the stats as far as um people doing that I, <clears throat> that has really really increased absolutely yeah people are waking up all across the globe to the the bigger picture that's going on as we see the opening of the 75th world health assembly with dr tedros the who and we know, you know, big questions going on right now with the WHO. We'll, we'll see what today and the next few days bring. Here is a little tweet on how to spot symptoms of the monkeypox, the new, newest plague upon the land here. Do you understand why this spike of cases is happening in Europe now? So we, we, we know that there's been, uh, you know, a period of, of restrictions across Europe and we don't know where this infection has come from and how it's come into Europe. Um, but no doubt it has come in at some point and then moved and managed to get into the networks that we're seeing the infections in. Uh, there's no obvious connection in our cases in the UK to a single event, but many people are reporting lots of different events that they've been to and lots of different contacts, close contacts with people and also sexual contacts. That is a very good form of close contact that can allow transmission to occur. Right. And you've talked about the, the close contact that has led to some warnings about summer festivals, um, uh, the holidays in general, because obviously kids will be out of school and there'll just be a lot more mixing. Is that something that we should be worried about? So the risk to the general population remains extremely low at the moment and I think people need to be alert to it. We really want clinicians to be alert to it and send the test if they're concerned. From the point of view of the general population, I think the important things that we talk about regularly, if you're feeling unwell, stay at home and avoid contact with others. If you develop a rash, immediately seek medical care, either by calling your GP or calling a sexual health clinic, whichever is more convenient for you. But, but what we're saying to people is, is that if you've got symptoms, 
avoid close contact with others and seek medical attention. You've mentioned a couple of the symptoms. Just again, set those out for people so that they will recognise them. Yeah, so, so the, the early symptoms, like with many infections, are, are non-specific. So it feels like a viral type infection, right. as we've all known about for the last yes. while. So again, if you've got one of those, we advise people to stay at home and we would continue to advise that. In the later stage, people develop a rash. The rash is usually on the face or the hands or the arms and it can go to the genital area. It starts as a sort of red spots and then moves into uh, vesicles. Uh, those are little blister type lesions right. that look a little bit like chicken pox. Um, and, uh, and then they scab over. And once the scabs have fallen off, people are no longer infectious. There you go. So the newest info on the newest plague upon the land. <coughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I, and it just seems like, gosh, you know, this is like whispers from the past almost. So we got to dig in a little bit more and we found this other stuff. So, yeah, obviously transmission can occur through contact with body, bodily fluids, sores, items contaminated with fluids or sores such as clothing, bedding, prolonged face-to-face -face contact. And isn't it fascinating how you know the U.S. government had ordered 13 million, you know, V's already ahead of the outbreak, and we talked about them war gaming a year ahead of the outbreak, and the fact that they even had the timing of the outbreak at the timing of the current outbreak a year ago. Mm -hmm. um, you know, f what's that saying? Fool me once. Shame on me, fool me twice. Oh, no, 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 it's, it's the opposite, right? Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. Yeah, and festivals. Festivals as people gather. You know, as you see, people are seeing a pattern emerge. This is good. This is good. People are starting to wake up more and more. And the reality is when we really wake up, we recognize we are deep, deep, deep behind a, well, I guess there's no other way to say it, in enemy lines. Mm -hmm. And here we see JB looking all dapper with the dark glasses like he is a California Highway Patrolman from the 80s or 70s. Yeah, albeit one that I wouldn't want to see flying down the highway on a motorcycle and the way he's <laughs> it needs to be pointed in the right direction. But he says it's something to be concerned about. Okay, something to be concerned about. And, you know, the science that he exhibits is just amazing. Is it not? I mean, what an example of the science. Okay, so let me see. When you're by yourself, you're all prepped up. You mm -hmm. have the mask on. Then when you finally get face-to-face -face with people, you take it off. Yeah, it's almost like they practice this, how to get it wrong every time. Yeah, uh, you know, is, is it hypocrisy or is it just, you know, is it senility or, or what is it? it you know, I got, I, I got to say, when he's walking down those stairs with his mouth covered, it feels like it's a symbol of something like, just keep your mouth shut. Well, again, we could keep going back to the legends in Sumeria that talk about these mighty powerful beings that come from the sky and that basically take over the earth, so to speak and treat humanity like slaves. And again, slaves would, of course, not speak up unless spoken to mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. monkeypox outbreak explodes across europe as cases in spain and italy trace to island festival with eighty thousand revelers and i don't know if it's just a case where you know maybe this this nasty virus is attracted to people that just uh, have a strange sense of fashion and it, it, it's got to be i'm sure it has it, maybe it's attracted to bright clothes uh, yeah, it may be, you know, we're, we're just starting to learn about this mm -hmm. new one. And we could see the cases all across the world, as you see number one up there. And all the, you know, Europe, North America, Australia, and obviously there have been cases for a long time in Africa. But why is it all of a sudden easier to transmit? And the, 
using the terminology that, my gosh, it feels so much like we're back in the 80s, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, the way it's transmissing, as of Sunday, 92 confirmed cases, 28 suspected, 12 member states that are not endemic for the virus. You know, so this is not where it usually is. Why did it just pop up all over the place? Oh, look at this. Schwab's cocoa pox, just like COVID crisis, but with blisters. Oh, that'll make anybody hungry. Cuckoo for cocoa pox. <laughs> <laughs> you can't make this stuff up. Silence equals death. Now, this is the AIDS crisis timeline. And, you know, again, what do we originally see in the late 70s, early 80s? A virus that had been previously appearing sporadically around the world began to spread throughout the United States. Originally identified as a quote unquote GAY disease because it was it was young gay men that were primarily affected by this. And again, many people felt that this was just a predecessor of something different that was going to be bigger. And, you know, this this was in so many people's minds for decades, 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 decades. Uh, total number of people living with uh, AIDS right today, they say, is 38 million. And it's still ongoing. And this shows the origin and the this, this silent spread. Now, this is the official statements, which, you know, as we know so many times, things that are official, you know, they're apt to change as we discover more. Uh, and again, it's history is written by those in control. So they say early 20th century, at some point in the first few decades of the 20th century, simian immunodeficiency virus made the jump from chimpanzees to humans in Central Africa. Now known as the subtype HIV-1, the virus begins circulating in Leopoldville, now Kinshasa, in the Democratic Republic of the Congo. And then 1959, a man dies in the Congo. Test of his blood samples later established. This is the earliest confirmed HIV-related deaths. And and then, you know, it goes on from that and becomes that uh, gay men's crisis, on and on and on. And it's so fascinating um, to see, you know, who is, like, at the forefront of this crisis. Well, somebody that we're very, very familiar with you know, um, nowadays, as you see, this is Fauci Pharmacy. Fauci Pharmacy. Fauci means sickle maker in one translation. Ah, sickle maker for who? The G-R-I-M, you know what? Yeah, so, you know, this has been the family business, but boy, is his family interesting, you know. And, And besides the fact that, you know, he was very involved in that crisis he was you know center stage right there and obviously center stage in this crisis it's interesting you know the anthony fauci bio the road to fame story the turning point of his career came in 1981 when he began a study on aids which was obviously the plague upon the land in those times and uh, it's just fascinating to see this. It's fascinating to see his lineage. His lineage is interesting. And some people, anonymous patriots, have put together this family tree. Interesting. Check out the family crest. Looks like the AMA. As far as the, the motion of the serpent with a crown on its head. Wait a minute. Corona. Corona, mm. corona means crown, devouring little humans. I mean, maybe that is a, a a young human, crown servant devouring a grizzling human child. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's interesting, is it not? And when we look at the family tree, it's really fascinating. It seems that it goes back to this one gentleman here, Raget Kaufman Abbas. Hmm, interesting, because when you start looking into that history as well, I mean, there's there's definitely uh, nobility here 
and there is definitely a curious bloodline going on. Right, and this is what we continue to see over and over and over are certain beings that are from certain bloodlines that take charge of situations that seem to put the rest of us um, in a place where we have to uh, do what they say. That's what Simon says. So this is I want one more situation where we are looking at the same thing, where there are controllers, and these are just the puppets. These are the ones that do what the true controllers say, but they all come from the same situation on the family line. Yeah, the Swiss commissioner of war, former colonel. Yeah, it, interesting. When we go on down farther, war and com commerce collaborator with Albert Escher, founder of Credit Swiss Bank, Swiss Life, Swiss Northeastern Railway, Swiss Federal Institute of Technology, Gothard Railway, Swiss Federal Constitution writer, Anthony Fauci's great, great, Uncle, common grandfather, Daniel Stotzetkritter, Abbas von Chur, and grandmother, Ursula fin, Finner Abbas von Chur. And when you go deeper in, too, there's uh, some really curious ties. But, I mean, again, think about this. Swiss Commissioner of War, Silver, Gold, Uranium, Coal ores, talc trader. That's that's somebody writer of the Swiss Constitution. Wow, Credit Suisse. That there's a lot of money there. There's a lot of money. There's a lot of influence there, and a lot of power. It's it's so um, fascinating. There was a talc mine landslide back in September fourth of sixteen eighteen. Twenty five hundred souls buried. That's huge. Interesting. That's about the, as many people as in 9-11 there. It's curious, and the symbolism as well. A crowned serpent devouring a grizzling human child while carrying a black yoke balancing two buckets of gold. And then when we go uh, and look you know, deeper into some of the, the family lineage, it's fascinating too because... It, it's it's talking about this raetic nobility, which are people you know on basically uh, the Swiss and Italian border, and they are even pre uh, Etruscan, and the Etruscans are fascinating too because again the Etruscan people didn't speak uh, any Latin language; they had their own unique language. Again, could be related to certain beings that survived the destruction of Atlantis, in my mind. That's what comes up. And then the Jesuit ties. Uh-oh, the Jesuit ties, because there are Jesuit ties there again. Yes, so all of these things that look familiar and just, I mean, it's like a, a record player, just constantly circling back to the same thing, so... Uh, these beings, they really have, it's like they have a one-track mind. They want to take control, and they really don't care what happens to me or you as they do it. They want control, and that's the most important thing. Absolutely. And then when we look to NAZI Germany, and we see Hitler and his drugs inside the Nazi secret speed craze. So there was this book called Blitzed, and we were talking about this, uh, how the soldiers would use metamphetamines, oxycodone, and morphine. And, you know, they were pushing past what most people would be able to do on the battlefield because they were also hyped up on these drugs. And when you think about the modern system that's in place, when things that are completely natural have a lot of natural buffers, that's going to protect you from, you know, negative side effects are made illegal. But then the things that are illegal are things that really can hook you and take you down a nasty downward spiral. There's reasoning for that because these things open you up to entities that are not on third density. They're on fourth density. And then they can totally control you. Mm. 
It's so much like unlocking a door and opening that door wide so that the information flowing through has a direct contact to you, then making you uh, a puppet, unfortunately. Yeah, the, the fact is, uh, you know, the average soldier as well as, you know, the, the brain trust, these, these guys are drug addicts. It, they and the, it was it was encouraged because it was also a way for them to be you know if you want to look at it in uh, a little bit older terminology you know demonically possessed so to speak and controlled and again in um, Trevor Ravenscroft's book the Spear of Destiny he talks about Hitler and, and there was somebody that was watching Hitler speak, uh, making note, one of his, one of his subordinates, uh, that was writing about what he was seeing would say, you know, he's watching him right before going out on the stage and there's tens of thousands of people or more out there. And before he goes out on the stage, he looks like a little shell of a man. Yeah. Cause he wasn't tall. He was short, and certainly not he's he was no Don Juan, obviously. And he looked like just a shell. And when he would all of a sudden go out there on stage, it was like he was possessed. And all of a sudden he was eloquent and all of a sudden he had the ability to control the energy of the people. Well, this is because he was possessed. This this is because he was being controlled. And again, even though he is the apparent leader of the Third Reich there, he was just a puppet himself. And again, history again is written by the victors in a way that it smooths over some atrocities and hides others. And of course, we'll try to always find scapegoats to blame everything on when the real control system may be still completely active today just using new puppets mm -hmm. i mean there's so many different modalities that they use to keep people um under their control and i think the to me the the saddest one is using people's own belief system against them and using that to make sure that they don't step outside of any lines make sure they um, use this belief system from the time they wake up in the morning to the time they go to bed at night and just make sure that they feel fearful if they go and look at any other kind of belief system or a different way of, of living. So they really dug it deep into the human psyche on how to behave and this behavior is for their benefit, not yours. Absolutely. And many of you are very familiar with Operation Paper, Paperclip. And, you know, I got to agree, the Nazis didn't lose, just, you know, Germany did. They moved to America, and some went to Russia, too. So from 45 to 55, Operation Paperclip granted nearly 1,000 German scientists American citizenship. Many had been longtime members of the Nazi par Party and the Gestapo and had conducted experiments on humans at concentration camps and committed other war crimes, atrocities. Scientists ended up in U.S. and military industrial complex, worked with CIA, NASA, and more. One of the ex-Nazi experiments that continued in America was MKUltra, mind control. And you see Werner von Braun became the head of NASA. You know, he was the NASA Associate Administrator. Uh, Arthur Rudolph, NASA Rocket Science, and Herman Oberth, NASA Rocket Science as well. I mean, these are people that should have been, you know, in Nuremberg. These are people that should have, you know, faced trial for committing atrocities and experiments that, that would make most people vomit. But they were taken into the system. And again, this system is a corrupt system. And here we see, and it was all the way back in 33 that they established the first concentration camps. 33, well before, uh, well, well before any outbreak of hostilities. And again, Poland's invasion was September of 1939. And many forget, too, that Poland, poor Poland, was basically invaded by the Nazis and also by the Soviets. And they just split it up. And then later on, the Nazis decided to attack the Soviets. 
Again, the puppet masters knew all along what side was going to win. They they could have changed things. They 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 could have changed the outcome, but they always had in mind a progression. And again, who are the puppet masters is the big question. And so what many people will have a hard time accepting is that they're they're not homo sapiens. Mm-hmm. No, <laughs> they're, they're definitely not homo sapiens. And once you get into this information and you really, really study, I think a lot of people begin to kind of rack their head against a wall thinking, how could other humans do this? How could humans do this to other humans? Why is this happening? And once you sit with that for a little while, um, it becomes clear that the reason this happens is because it's not, it's not humans. They're not human. And these beings need to stay in the dark. They need to stand back. They cannot uh, let it be known that they are the ones controlling everything because then all heck would break loose and we would find ways to free ourselves and help free others if we knew more about them. Absolutely. And then you just got to go into the UFO abduction phenomenon and see that they're always uh, looking uh, into the genetic end of it. And there's always samples that are taken and experiments to be done, hybrids being created. And you, know, you look at Genesis uh, 6 and you get this little blurb, you know, about the, the giants were there in those days, the mighty men of old, the men of renown. Now, that's not negative. Men of renown, mighty men of old, that actually sounds kind of positive. Like these are like superheroes or something. This is, again, because the biblical portrait is one that is obscured because it's so condensed and all the details are out of it and then we have the book of Enoch that gets discovered and all of a sudden everybody thinks everybody that re- reads it thinks I got the big picture now no you don't it's it's again a distortion it it's anytime we're looking at things we need to look in a much bigger perspective much much bigger perspective because again, if you're looking out of the biblical perspective, you're looking at one little tribe of people so that, that their perspective. And also, again, what mindset dominates the planet? The Abrahamic mindset. Two thirds of the people on the planet come out of the Abrahamic tradition. What's the Abrahamic tradition? Well, Judaism's the root, or is it? You know, and that's something else we could go into. Um, and then you had Christianity that sprang out of it and other things, absolutely. And then we have Islam, which is the latest. And those three, those three prongs are, are the Abrahamic tradition. And they dominate the mindset of this planet is dominated by that tradition. People, again, view things in terms of fallen angels, well, what is the definition of an angel? It means messenger in the original. Messenger. So these are fallen messengers. Again, everything is just misperception uh, on such a level that it distorts reality. Of course. Where are these beings from? Are they from 3D Earth? Originally? If no, then they're extraterrestrials. And so when you say spiritual, this is a spiritual battle. What do you mean? Well, is a spiritual battle something you can see? Can you see that that battlefield? Well, maybe we see uh, the ramifications of that battlefield in our own you know backyard. But you, you know you would basically be talking about something that's not of this particular vibrational frequency, something that lies outside of the visible uh, spectrum of light. So obviously, interdimensional is a dimensional battle that's ongoing. And so we need to look a, a little bit bigger, which I know most of you do. Probably 95 to 98 percent of the people that watch this video uh, understand all this already. But what we're trying to do is we're trying to wake up those that are still caught in a mindset that's going to end up feeding the system instead of exposing the system. Mm-hmm. And and bringing people people more together. I think it's the togetherness and how how we all have commonalities and we are really we are not separate from each other so 
a, a better focus on how can we help each other? How can we work with each other? Because we're all in the same boat, all of us. Um, and knowing that when we know the truth, that gives us a whole new set of tools to move forward with. Um, but we, we can't be um, separating from one another and that that seems to be the hard part but we're all we're getting a lot better at it yeah this is this is this is the apocalypse it's the great unveiling so everything's going to be revealed and the cover-up is deep and it it's in so many different uh levels it's in so many different subjects and topics obviously i mean it, it certainly extends into uh the whole health situation you know that's something that's always been controlled and when we look at the experiments why did they do these experiments they, these experiments were again we have that that stated goal of creating a perfect race really is that really what was going on were they looking to create supermen supermen like the gods per se and this is where everything gets jumbled together again. When you hear about these giants in Genesis and you hear a, about these fallen angels, it distorts everything. Because even amongst the giants, there were many different types of giants upon this planet. And part of that goes back to the fact that this planet originally was Tiamat. Tiamat that was, um, well, in that in that form it was destroyed and when we when we go and look at the myths of tiamat you know again we find these the, the serpent that pops up and sometimes tiamat's represented as a serpent there's so much distortion going on here but earth is tiamat earth is tiamat reborn and so in mesopotamian religion Tiamat is a primordial goddess of the sea, mating with Apsu. Now, Apsu is a, a word that is very familiar to those that have studied uh, Sitchin's works. And again, yeah, not everything in the Sumerian legends is based on translations of Zechariah Sitchin. No, no, no. And, and you don't have to even stop there because all these myths are, are something that we find all, along, all around the globe, all different traditions. They pop up time and time again. And so described as a glistening one. Tiamat's referred to as a woman, described as a glistening one. Well, shining one. Now we were talking about beings of a very high vibrational frequency. And, and we, we have been in contact with the spirit of Tiamat. And how do you see her? Well, very, very strong, uh, extremely benevolent, one who wants to encompass things and make things better, someone who wants to bring truth, someone who wants to bring understanding and support of the true knowledge, someone who wants to bring love and pulling people together. She is extremely benevolent. Um, she is someone, she is everyone's mother, like literally in the literal sense. We all, we all have a piece of her in us. She, she's with all of us. What, what it is, is it's a matter of allowing these energies in. And when we've been preconditioned and pre-programmed to not step out of certain bounds, then we are exiting these beings out of our life who would otherwise very much step forward and, and help us. If, if we were to allow, but we have been handed this belief system and all the information that only they want us to have in hopes of keeping us under control. So when, when we go through these beings and we look at them, you really need to sit with them and feel the experience and not necessarily always go by what, what the writings have said, because remember, it's written by the victors. They're going to write what they want to manipulate your mind. So now our discernment becomes the biggest and best tool in our toolbox. And in this age, we are really, really understanding that we have different abilities. They are trying to hand us abilities from their 3D realm. They are copying everything we can do organically. And they are giving it to us in um, things like our phones, our tablets, our laptops. But we have that 
original organic ability built right into us and it seems like they have all of these writings and they mesh all of these beings together so people you know they argue with each other about oh well you know this says this about so and so so you're wrong you know it's about he said she said i'm right you're wrong and that's kind of where they seem to hold us right now absolutely and and we'll get i'll, I'll read comments where somebody will say you know you got to check this out you got it wrong well, what we're giving you is our direct experience, and we're, I'm very well versed in, in the mythos around the world and all these different mindsets on who is what and who is who, but when we've actually um, connected through either remote viewing or, or through Cindy going under in trance and where we actually allow another being to, to utilize her to communicate to us, and when you do have fully developed pineal glands, you could sense the energies. So we know when there's dark energies that are trying to spread lies. It's, it's just so obvious. Just when you could see somebody's aura and you see their energy field and you see them talking and you're noticing the colors change, you know when they're being deceptive. And, and this is something that both of us can do. And it's really due to past lives and then, you know, daily meditation, yoga, qigong, pranayama. It's, it's just part of who we are and how we prioritize things. Also, staying away from fluoridated water, GMO foods, not taking in the big F-A-R-M-A, because, again, that, that makes it so you can't see clearly. That's, that's part of the biggest um, purpose for the big F-A-R-M-A is making it so you can't see into other densities. You can't perceive the true intentions of other beings. So steering clear of all those things and having a daily practice, that can open up your eyes to the extent where you, you're not going to get, um, you're not going to get, to get fooled, <laughs> so to speak. And when we look here in the Enuma Elish, the Babylonian epic of creation, Tiamat bears the first generation of deities she gives birth to. Her, Hubson, her husband, Apsu, correctly assuming they're planning to kill him and usurp his throne, later makes war upon them as killed. Enraged, she also wars upon her husband's murderers, taking the form of a massive sea dragon. She is then slain by Enki's son, the storm god Marduk. And not before, she has also brought forth the monsters of Mesopotamian pantheon, including the first dragons, whose body she fills with poison instead of blood. Marduk then forms the heavens and the earth from her divided body. And again, this is a distortion because it's, it's the Anunnaki that are the ones that are taking control of the planet away from its, its original purpose, which was basically to be a benevolent place for life to develop in a peaceful manner and this is why we see a patriarchal society just think about that again our father who is in heaven w you know the the ignoring the mother energies because the mother energies will connect you to the truth the father is not the father as in the spirit the spirit that creates everything from nothing the father is basically, again, the Anunnaki putting themselves in that place because, you know, Satan is the father of lies. And Satan is uh, working through the Anunnaki. And he's not really the Anunnaki himself. It, it, again, the, the term Satan means the adversary. So what, what do we have when we're talking about the Anunnaki? Unfortunately, they are fallen beings, very similar in some ways to us but they they are fallen per se in that they're they're not on the higher densities they're not able to reach fifth density at all now now they're stuck in fourth density and that seems to be the way they like it they're not going any higher than fourth density and they can at times manifest in third density so they truly are the fallen ones and you know marduk and anki and lil these beings they're not the creators of all this. They are just basically like space pirates. They're opportunists. And their offspring, through the Ijiji, and again, the Ijiji story, the stories of the Ijiji 
or another classification of being that was doing the bidding, sort of a slave race that rebelled against the Anunnaki and then get put in charge of Earth. And they have been controlling Earth, and it's their offspring that we see today. And again, this mating between the beings that we call the Gigi and Homo sapiens, you know, this is this is these lineages. These are the royal ones. <laughs> royal? Really? No, these, these, these beings are very low vibrational. And it's obvious. All they do is promote war, hatred, and division. Now, when you look to Tiamat herself, this is a, a very high vibrational goddess energy and it's the goddess energy th that is going to turn around this dark age and start to lead us back into an age of enlightenment and understanding and uh, understanding the oneness of all which will end the non-stop wars mm -hmm. it, it's it's that entity that creates the love and the nourishment for all things to grow so um there's there's a lot more information that we really need to sit down and put together uh, from a perspective where we're just looking at it, standing back and just witnessing it and viewing it, not just reading it and going by what somebody else has written. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because that's where all the problem lies. And, and people just take what they're given and run with it. And, and I understand all of a sudden reading the Book of Enoch for the first time and thinking, oh, I got the big picture. It was actually, you know, 200 of these fallen angels that, that are now locked up until the end of days. So this must be the end of days. Well, look at history. There's never been a time when there's not war, pestilence, and disease. No. The dark powers have been here the entire time running free. They're not locked up in the darkness. Again, it's, it's an inversion. It's an inversion of the truth. Yet, there was a certain number of Ijiji that came here to the planet and controlled the planet. And now there's only one left alive of the original ones. In recent times, there had been as many of, as four, but now there's only one. And you can't think of them as an Emperor Palpatine because they do have amazing uh, ability with their mind to control humans. And again, the Anunnaki themselves are overshadowed by the Draco. The Draco themselves are overshadowed by the AI Borg Collective, which when Cindy sees it, she sees it as a black, basically a black dragon made of black goo, so to speak. And so, you know, this is really what we have. So when we look at this, and it's it's saying that she created the monsters. No, it's it's quite the opposite. Again, if we just look to what the victors give us, we're going to get the victor's side. The experimentation never stopped. It never stopped. It's just changed. And here's 10 terrible experiments performed in the U.S. And I won't go through them all, but they're pretty horrible. How about Vanderbilt University? 45, 1945, researchers at Vanderbilt University set up, a, set up a study to find out the rate of iron absorption in pregnant women. Their preferred method of measurement was radioactive iron. Researchers gave pills to 829 anemic women without telling them they were consuming something radioactive. Thanks to the pills, the re women received radiation levels 30 times higher than normal exposure. Study has secondary objective to observe the long-term effects of radiation on children. <clears throat> the experiment likely caused the death of three children, 11-year-old girl and two boys, 11 and 5. Vanderbilt ended up the subject of a lawsuit at the behest of the mothers of a dead child, and it would settle for $10 million. Just look up the Vanderbilt family. This is another lineage of these, of these people. And, you know, here's one on 1953 Oak Ridge National Laboratory radioactive injection experiments on term terminally ill patients. Um, they, they've done so many bacteria testing in San Francisco. And they say in the 50s, fear of biological warfare with the Soviets inspired Americans to American officials to test the viability of an offshore attack. So they basically um, sprayed San Francisco with a bacteria and it provided bright red colonies on soil and water samples for tracking 
and people got sick and and one man did die um just these satanic ex experiments on cute little puppies uh horrible experiments with breaking toys on on babies and seeing how they're going to react cancer experiments uh is more experiment it's just horrible stuff and and this is just a tiny tiny little glimpse of the stuff that has been perpetrated on American citizens by American powers that be. And then we see these Snowden documents revealing that Nazi aliens rule us. Will we be any surprise? Again, this is the same power structure that has been on the globe for at least 5,000 years in full control for 5,000 years. So, you know, are these photoshopped? Yeah, probably. But it doesn't change the fact that the, the Nazis were, were being guided by direct contact with these beings. Other people, such as John Dee, who was the court astrologer to Queen Elizabeth, you know, created the whole Enochian magic system. And again, this was something that was a draconian system. And, you know, even when we look to Aleister Crowley and uh, getting in t contact with this being, it's none other than just a gray alien, again, you know, part of the same control grid, and again, giving us lies and disinformation. This is what they do. So until we recognize you know, that we are in an interdimensional extraterrestrial battle uh, that has been ongoing for millennia, millennia this is and this is so much bigger than earth this goes back to lyra when we think about the pleiadians and pleiadian origins the pleiadians themselves come from lyra and so the lyran wars have never ended and we've touched on that and we'll go into that deeper in the future right yeah we'll definitely go into these things because there's a whole nother many shows in that yeah, the tons and tons. So thank you guys so much for your support. And Patreon and Ko-Fi, we couldn't do it without you guys. And also do check out Medicinal Foods. Make sure to use coupon code EEA. There's a link on every video at the top. It does give you a discount. Lots of good stuff for boosting the immune system and detoxing. As always, wake people up by sharing these videos. Much love. God bless and namaste. Namaste.